everyone. Thanks so much for coming out. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for coming out to our first event. Uh, we're super excited by the response and really excited to work with this community. So I'll give you a brief intro to both this group and today's event and our first guest speaker. So I'm Emily Hopkins. I work at the University of Saskatchewan in Saskatoon. So I'm the coordinator for the institutional repository there. And I'm co-chairing this committee along with Pascal Calarco from New Windsor. Um, and joining us are Priscilla Carmini from York, Robin Hall from McEwen, Tim Rivera from Brock, and Nelisa Tanner from Memorial University of Newfoundland. So our mandate from Carl is really focused on organizing these sorts of events to bring repository practitioners together to compare notes, share resources, and solve problems as a community. So to that end, we've made a short survey for you, which I'll share in the chat now, and you can fill that out at any point. Um, just to get a sense of what kinds of events you'd like to see in the future, what your concerns are. I'll share it again later, but just so you have that handy. Um, and so, yeah, you folks are the community of practice, and we're really excited to see so many of you here. So today we have a special guest, Jeff Harder. He's the Associate University Librarian at the University of Alberta and also the Project Director for CARL's National Shared Repository Infrastructure since September 2022. So today we'll start with about 15 minute presentation from Jeff to give us an overview of that project's work so far as his term as director is coming to a close at the end of this summer. Um, and then Pascal is going to take over and introduce sort of the community discussion time. So Pascal and I will help moderate discussion on what you see as potential benefits, drawbacks, questions um, for your institution in relation to such a strategy, and make sure there's time for other questions you have for Jeff or anyone else here. Um, and we definitely want to hear from you. That's sort of the point. So don't be shy about raising your hand, adding questions or comments, or contributing to a Google Doc we've set up if you prefer to share your comments. Uh, in writing and we'll review it after the doc. So even if you don't get a chance to speak or don't want to, you can contribute your thoughts there. Um, so I'm gonna share the Google doc in the chat now. So you have it handy and can find it. Uh, and without further ado, thank you so much for coming today and I'll hand it over to Jeff Harder. Thanks, Emily. And uh, great to see everybody. I'm, uh, I guess, talking to you from Treaty 6 today in a lovely uh, sunny day outside with no smoke and uh, Clear skies, which is really, really wonderful. Um, so yeah, it's great to great to uh, have this many people on the hall. You never quite know how many uh, folks are going to show up, but uh, fantastic to have this much uh, much interest. And um, yeah, the uh, sorry, I'm just getting myself organized here from the last meeting that I jumped out of. Um, yeah, so I think, as Emily mentioned, I'm typically associate university librarian at the U of A, but for the last 10 months, I've been seconded to Carl to try to um, bring some focus to a conversation that's been going on for, uh, for quite some time, I think, around the opportunities and the challenges of trying to share more infrastructure together. Um, maybe just to take a moment to thank all of you for uh, for all the hard work you've been doing. I know Many of you on this call, and I know how much you've invested into uh, repository services and related um, activities. So thank you for that. I think it's one of the assets that Canada really has is such a strong um, community who's been working, you know, on some of these challenges now for the better part of two decades, if not more. So we've got lots to uh, lots to build on there, and I think lots of collective experience and knowledge and. Uh, um, you know, foundational uh, work work to uh, to to go forward with. Um, I'm not going to talk a ton about um, the context leading up to this. I'm hoping that conversations have been socialized enough that that folks sort of know what what led to um, the interest in shared repository services. Um, I mean, I think the the 10 second uh, summary of that is repository work is hard. There's more work to do than we have resources, and that includes people, that includes time, that includes attention. There is just a, you know, a growing set of things to do, and we see the scholarly ecosystem, research activity, technology, all of those sorts of things outpacing um, what a lot of us aspire to, uh, to try to do. So um, not finger pointy in any way. I think everybody does heroes work and uh, there's an awful lot of martyrs in this community, I think, but uh, you know, it's a challenge, it's a challenge. And so, you know, the way the world's shifting with cloud computing and third-party services and the way that libraries um, as part of larger 
institutions are looking at trying to, I won't say solve these problems, but I think try to address them within the context of, you know, all of the different variables that we're dealing with is, is looking more and more, I think, to, to trying to share what we can in ways that are, are sensible and still allow us to do what we need to do at the institutional level. Hopefully with, with forethought to trying to make gains at national and international level where impact can, uh, can most be felt. So, so that's just a little bit of the, the context. I'd like to keep this conversational style, but um, maybe I'll share just a couple slides here to give a little bit of structure. Um, and I'm just looking, can I share my screen here? Looks like I can. I'm not gonna try to share my email. I'm gonna try to share my slides. Number two, there we go. Okay, can everybody see that? Yep. Yep, good, good, good. Um, not still showing there. Yeah, so um, in, you know, I think in the list of thank yous too, I have to thank the uh, Shared Repository Infrastructure Advisory Committee, which Carl formed, which has helped um, really, again, shape and, and bring some focus to, uh, to some of this work. Um, I won't call out each and every individual on that list, but um, yeah, I've, you can see that it's a, a pretty fantastic group of people that I've been um, privileged to, to work with, um, including folks like uh, Kathleen Shear, who's, you know, working at the international level all the time with, uh, with CORE, trying to to um, advocate and bring real world solutions where possible to things like interoperability. Um, so what I've done here is created, I, I've shared a framing strategy it's called, which is sort of an active working document that we're using to try to, to bring some focus again to this work that we're doing. Um, those of you who have a phone handy might wanna point it at the QR code, but uh, otherwise the bit.ly link will take you there. Um, it's a version of what we're working with. The version that the committee is working with is all marked up with comments and things that without the context, I think probably wouldn't make a ton of sense necessarily, but um, this gives you a, a sense of what we're working towards. Um, I think it, it talks about the, you know, the scope of the project and tries to articulate as clearly as possible what it is that we're doing, which is really to, um, and I can't, you know, I'll try to be as clear as possible about this. It's to not solve repositories and all of the challenges that go with it. It's not about trying to build a single repository, single national repository for which all content needs to flow into. What it's about is trying to create an option for, institutions that are interested in sharing repository platform technology uh, in a similar vein as, as with Borealis and the shared dataverse platform that we have there via Scholars Portal. Um, I think that's probably the most clear um, example that I can point to in terms of what this is about. It's not trying to put anyone out of business. It's not trying to say this is the one and only platform to use. Um, it's not saying that there can't be other alternatives and networks and things that uh, that are out there. But I think you know there, there's um, been identified a, a critical mass of institutions that are thinking that operating something at national scale, a la Borealis, is a good um, thing to explore. And so that's really what this is all about. Um, so you can take a look at that framing strategy and hopefully that answers um, some of the questions you have. And again, it is, uh, you know, at a point where we're, and I'll, I'll talk a bit about next steps and where things are at, but uh, I would say we're still in the earlier rather than later phases of this, but hope, hopefully signposting um, some stronger directions for the community that will let all of our institutions try to plan um, quite important to me and I think quite important to uh, to uh, most people is that we understand what principles we're grounding our work in as we begin to develop this. And so, um, again, I won't read them all out, but uh, there are principles that we're using to ground our work. I think probably um, a good a good signal is that these seem to align with things like, for example, the COAR core 
principles um, for international interoperability and uh, repository networks. Uh, the U.S. repository network, USRN, if you're familiar with that, uh, also has a set of principles. I think you see a lot of resemblance there. Um, and hopefully with, uh, with other networks and, uh, and repositories that are out there as well. Um, the uh, one thing I'll mention is that, uh, and the Ontario folks on this call will probably be aware of this, but the Ontario Council of University Libraries also um, around the time, a little bit predating actually my secondment beginning, but also um, formed a working group to take a look at what are the shared repository interests and opportunities within the provincial boundaries of Ontario. And so um, that group has wrapped up their work. They also had a similar set of principles. You'll see a lot of commonality between, I think, what you see here and what, what they did. Um, but they had also wrapped up their, uh, their work and indeed um, concluded that there was enough interest that, uh, that they should move forward. So um, one of the activities that we've undertaken recently, which I would thank those of you on the call who were a part of, um, and you might've been um, consulted or contributed in some other way, form or fashion, but we did a survey to try to, I think we, you know, we, we knew that there was interest out there. We knew that there were a number of organizations that were keen to, uh, to uh, be part of this conversation and pursue, pursue a, uh, a shared um, uh, service of some sort. But what was useful with the survey, I think was to get a, uh, mailing list of sorts, I guess, really have institutions identify um, whether or not they were interests. So we do have that now. There was a little bit of a challenge, I think, trying to distribute um, the survey beyond the CARL membership. And I guess that's another important point to highlight on this call is that while CARL, um, you know, was looking to kind of convene this conversation and try to loop the yardsticks forward in terms of a shared repository infrastructure. Um, from the outset, I think it was quite clear that this doesn't need to stop the boundaries of the CARL membership group. It really is something that, uh, that, that benefits, you know, a number of different institutions across Canada, uh, members of CARL or not. So, yeah, so, you know, um, those of you on this call, and I think it's kind of been part of the culture of the repository conversation um, with open repositories, working group and other sorts of activities is that the community is broad and we want to, to make sure that, uh, again, we're being thoughtful, including um, those who, who want to and can uh, meaningfully contribute to it, so. Um, the survey, again, again, I mean, there's lots to go into there. I think um, some of that will come up, come out in our, our conversation that we have today. But uh, some, yeah, some really interesting observations that came out of that. Um, not surprisingly, you know, we had asked, you know, to what level of, uh, you know, what kind of, what, what have there, have there been customizations and things that you've done at the local level um, as you built out your repository? Um, surprise, surprise. Yes. Um, we've got 20 years often of different bespoke customizations and workflows that, uh, you know, have been done for really good reasons that have impacted larger swaths of people to, you know, that squeaky wheel Professor X who demanded something back in uh, 2005 and by golly, after enough squawking, it happened. Um, yeah, so, I mean, there's lots of those sorts of things. I think one of the um, things that, you know, we saw in the survey that I have found reflected in a lot of the one-on-one -on -one conversations or one-on-two, one-on-three conversations I've been having for the last 10 months with, uh, with a number of of uh, you on this call, as well as others, you know, just the very candid conversations about what's working, what's not working, is that, you know, with the customizations and things that have been done, there's really, I think, um, interest and a willingness in a way that maybe we haven't kind of seen before in the same sort of way to abandon some of those customizations and say, you know what, again, it's not about finger pointing, it's not about saying that was that was uh, the wrong thing to do back in, again, 2005 or 2009, whatever it was, but that, you know, in the, in the spirit of trying to make gains at the national and international level and 
appreciating, you know, a different set of circumstances now than maybe we didn't fully see, you know, back when we started these repositories, like the fact that, you know, they're often not sort of the jewels in the, the university showcase that we thought they originally were, you know, the president and the board of, you know, the, the, uh, the um, provost are not necessarily trotting out the institutional repository when they're meeting with those high profile donors. I, you know, that's the, there's a direct correlation there between how much money is given and so forth. But, you know, there they are more like infrastructure. They need to be dependable um, sources of, uh, of uh, information and they need to serve preservation purposes and so forth. But really, you know, they're, they're less sexy infrastructure and not so much the, uh, the jewel and the showcase that uh, maybe we envisioned them to be um, back in the day. Um, so yeah, so I mean, that's just one example. There's lots of other examples of that, but I think there, there seemed to be a willingness to, uh, you know, according to the survey and the conversations I've had that, that by and large, uh, the majority said that, no, if, if, you know, those sorts of things don't benefit everyone, we would be willing to, uh, to leave them behind. They wouldn't be a showstopper. Um, so that, that gives us something to work with, I think. Um, so just continuing to move along, I guess, and to, you know, get to the punchline, I think, you know, in, in serving and trying to understand what infrastructure providers we have in Canada and, you know, ways that this could be configured and governed and funded and set up, the appetite is extremely small, I think, almost no matter who you talk to, to set up a new organization, a new agency to deliver um repository services um we just you know canada is geographically big but not so big that we have an infinite number of of uh organizations to sort of choose from i think as we looked at major players in this space and had conversations with them um you know quite uh i will say quickly but i think you know um signs and, and signals started to point back to to scholars portal as you know being in a really good position to maybe um help with uh with taking that next step and again it's just a next step it's not the be all and end all necessarily so between the work that the local working group had done and the recommendations to go forward and um look at um look at delivering shared services at the provincial level for institutional repositories. Uh, we find ourselves kind of at this natural coming together point where we want to try to merge that with the Carl conversations. And Carl is not an infrastructure provider. Again, it's just trying to convene folks together so that we can try to make progress on, uh, on this challenge. But I think there is a willingness now that has been you know, discussed and shared at the level of, you know, the directors and some of the key decision makers in these questions to try to work together and get ourselves closer to, um, you know, an MOU that tries to signpost for the community that, you know what, we don't know exactly how we're going to get there. There's, you know, a number of things that we need to tackle and take a look at. Um, there's complexities in doing some of this work. There's agreements that need to be made in terms of, you know, what this does and what it won't do and it's certainly not going to do everything but you know there's there's a willingness to to move ahead what that allows then is i think the parties involved the stakeholders to begin to get down into that next level of conversation and really begin to have some more meaningful conversations about what does this thing look like what um you know is a minimum viable product that uh would be in place that institutions can, you know, make their, they, they have agency, institutions can make their own, you know, decisions and weigh the pros and cons of doing things themselves or via other services, commercial or non-commercial and, you know, make their, make their determinations. But I think it's really important that we get to a point where this can be signposted and we can, um, you know, as, as uh, institutions, you know, including my own, make decisions about what uh, what the future might hold. So, um, with the OCL working group, and again, I'm not part of OCL. I don't live in Ontario. I don't want to speak for anyone. And there's folks on this call who um, are well positioned, maybe to uh, to do so. But the OCL um, recommendations were fairly clear that um, D space was where. 
um, folks were wanting to go. Again, I don't think that's necessarily reflective of DSpace is the one and only, but I think it was, you know, clear that or clearer that there were a number of institutions, um, the majority that were either using DSpace already or looking strongly in that direction. And it seemed, you know, a pretty natural progression to, to move in that direction. That I think is reflective of the national conversation as well and the surveying that was done is that while well, there's you know um lots of different use of different different platforms out there and different approaches and so forth but there's enough critical mass there with dspace that it makes sense to to move in that direction as uh, as uh, this next step that we would would take um so uh you know beyond what i've said how, how long have i been speaking for here emily i should look at a clock too long just, it's 11 just a couple minutes over if we can Okay, I know I'm going to wrap this up pretty quick, but um, yeah, I, I think, I mean, uh, I guess my own philosophy creeping in here and others can check me on this too, but I think technology is, is certainly creates a series of challenges for us and represents, you know, a lot of work. Unfortunately, we have some really good people in this country to help with those problems, but um, by and large, I think the greater challenge is political and economic and organizationally just trying to marshal all of these sorts of things together. Um, and most people tend to agree that I think where networks really succeed is not necessarily just the client provider relationship. When it comes to services, it's, it's, you know, the communities that develop around them. And I've heard this time and time again, and I think the scholars portal folks have also really strongly reinforce this is that a service like Borealis would not be what it is without that strong community of experts that sits around it. That really was hugely influential in how things shaped and uh, and uh, developed for a service like that and, and how it continues to, to grow and I think benefit all of us. So um, that's a critical piece, I think, of what is needed with the institutional repository service that we're talking about here. Um, and again, I've, I've heard this, you know, in all of the conversations I've had and really strongly reflected in the survey as well. Um, we did ask a question around that. And uh, yeah, there, there was very strong support to have those, call them what you want, but those, uh, you know, affinity groups or expert groups that, that would form up to take a look at things like metadata and discovery. Again, a real appetite, I think across the country to say, you know what, maybe it's time that we really did try to settle on some core metadata elements and just understand a little bit more commonly what what core um, metadata might represent. Um, if these things are set up properly, there's ways that one can still do things locally if you really need to, taking advantage of APIs and other, you know, sorts of approaches too, but you kind of got to get your center shored up for uh, for those sorts of things to uh, to work. So yeah, I, I don't have a ton of time left myself in this economy. I'll probably, you know, help continue on, but um, it's not about me. I think it's about everybody coming together to try to uh, to make some progress here. So um, what, you know, I will try to focus some of my time on is, you know, helping to establish that MOU to to get us to that next uh, next point, and then you know, looking at things like um, costs and funding opportunities. And again, we can talk about this in the conversation. But we do have uh, the alliance and some different arms for funding now. Which you know, if all of us individually are waving our hands in the air, we're probably not going to attract much money. But if there's some collective um, action, there are some collective. Uh, uh, proposal writing and so forth we might stand a chance of uh of bringing in some funding to do uh hopefully more interesting things but that needs to be one-time funding to do sort of one-time activity we can't confuse and tease that up with uh with operational funds and um sustainable models for uh for the service um last thing i'm just going to mention governance as well too um you know, if we're looking at moving ahead with Scholars Portal, for example, I think there's lots of lots of different uh, things we can learn from the governance structures that have been set up there. Um, again, some of you may have been involved in those conversations and that work. Um, if so, you know, kudos and thanks for that. 
but we can learn a lot from that. And I think there's ways that we can share those governance structures too. Again, not a lot of appetite to have all of these different, I'm getting hand wavy here. I have to see where my camera is, but you know, having all of these repetitive sort of silos of, of governance, for example, all of this needs to fit together. And so I think there's ways that we can, can structure things so that we have stakeholder voices at the right levels and the right inputs but you know, ways that we can share governance and do things sensibly as a country. Um, so yeah, I'll, uh, I'll stop there and I'll stop sharing my screen. Great, thanks so much, Jeff. Um, we have two kind of framing questions for the group.